Hi, this is Jim Gibson with CableSupply.com and today I'm going to show you some tricks and techniques on how to cable a residence. Probably the hardest cabling to do is a residence, but we're going to walk through it. I'm going to give you some ideas, some ways to do it, give you some suggestions. Okay, first we're going to start out where, where does the cable come from on the street? And what you have here is you have a box from AT&T and this is our underground wire that goes back to the AT&T site, actually goes to an intermediate site then to the major switch. But it starts here and this is where they connect your service to the house. This is Cox, this is the cable, the coax company. Uh, the, you know, they also provide twisted pair, but this is, these are competitors and I can't tell you how annoying this is to have these huge things on your front lawn. But this is called a right away this area right here on the ground is called a right away. That means that all your utilities are here. You know, your, your AT&T utilities, your Cox Communications utilities. If you look down here, you also have your water and you're also gonna have your electricity. Now that means they can come in here at any time they want and they can dig up this area of my lawn or someone else's lawn or whatever to put in utilities if they want. They have the right of way. You own this portion of your property uh, just like you own the sidewalk, but the government has the right or the utilities have the right to come in here and dig this area up to put in uh, some more utilities or to repair, put cable in the ground, whatever they want to do. Just as a side note, here is the electric. And again, it's in that, it's in that area right here that's uh, uh, right away uh, for the utilities uh, to dig all this up. They can dig this up all the way down the street if they want and uh, they kind of put everything back, but it's your responsibility to maintain it. Now next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on the side of the house, over here. And I took the panel off already. So when I took the panel off, I'm just describing what's going on here. And it looks like a mess, but it's really not. Uh, it's very easy to decipher and everything else, but you know, you see a Cox box here. It really feeds down to here. And you also have what's, I don't know, some useless box down here. But the, usually this is gonna be on the side of your house and it's called a minimum point of entry or MPO. And that means everything from here to the street uh, is a utilities responsibility. Cox, AT&T, if something is wrong from here to the street, they have a legal responsibility to fix it. So if this cable going underneath um, my uh, uh, grass, my, my driveway, things like that, if it fails, they have to replace it. They have to repair it and they, can't, and they should not charge you as a homeowner. But from here to the rest of the house, well then that becomes your responsibility uh, at your cost if there is a problem in there. Now let me tell you, once a cable is in place, unless someone fools with it, unless you have rats chewing on it, unless you have kids playing with it or something like that, you're not gonna have problems uh, with your cable. A lot of time these, these companies like AT&T and Cox, they'll tell you, well, we'll give you uh, insurance for your cable, at, you know, a uh, dollar a month. Well, if you wanna get that insurance, go get it, okay? But in my opinion, it's completely a waste of money and it, sometimes it can be a lot higher than a dollar a month. It's a waste of money because once the cable is in place, it's rare that it ever needs to be replaced again. And replacement to AT&T or Cox might be nothing more than running a cable along the wall and stapling it to the wall, uh, whereas this is not gonna look pretty. A lot of times it's maybe they're replacing a jack. Jack's not a big thing to replace. They're only worth uh, you know, under $5 for a decent jack. So to pay that insurance every single month seems to be a little ridiculous, but they do offer it and some people like it. I, uh, obviously, I would never buy insurance on my cabling because I know I've done the cabling right. I know it's gonna last longer than me on this earth. So this is what it looks like. This is a panel. A lot of times it will say telephone on it. This house is about 20 years old, so it's been painted a number of times. You can just barely read the telephone just goes right here. There's really nothing you're gonna do here. This is gonna be the, you, you know, the phone company, um, AT&T, Cox, whatever you have in your area. So it just goes back on. 
and you just screw it back in. Now, if you have a alarm system and uh, it's connected to the uh, uh, to the internet directly, or it's connected to a phone line, um, then what you need to do is you need to tell the alarm company to put a switch on this box because if someone is breaking into your house it's easy for them to take this box off and cut all your cables going into the house therefore when the alarm goes off um, and this applies also to businesses but if the alarm goes off um, then it has no way to, uh, to uh, call the central uh, uh, utility company so if someone going in here can cut all your cables now the newer alarms use cellular so you don't have to worry about you know having this box uh, you know someone getting in here and cutting these cables so um, I'd advise you that if you don't have the newer ones have your alarm company put a switch here so when this panel comes off it sets off the alarm immediately this house does have alarms on it CNR systems great company I had them for years Okay, so now we're coming into the garage, and this is where my feed comes into the garage. So it comes in behind the wall here, and when you swing on around here and take a look at this, um, what you have here is you have a coax cable, and that's what Cox brings in. I do not have AT&T service. I have Cox here. And there's another discussion. Let's take a side note on this, okay? Here's another discussion on this whole thing about... Um, you know if you have competitors in your area so I signed a three-year contract for a certain amount of service from Cox well when that contract uh, comes up to the end I'm gonna wait about a month or two before it ends and then I'm gonna talk to AT&T and I'm gonna tell them I have Cox and I'm gonna say Cox is charging me this can you beat them and if they can beat them I go to AT&T now I was with AT&T for years and uh, a bandwidth uh, was a certain price uh, I renegotiated it at the end and found out that I get a better deal from Cox today. Now, tomorrow, maybe it's different, okay? So I'm not recommending Cox or AT&T or any of the others. I'm just saying that at the end of the contract, you should try to negotiate with the competitor, and you're going to find out that you're going to get a better deal. Don't let that contract just continue on, because even if you talk to uh, Cox or AT&T and you say I'm with you right now and I'm thinking of going to the other guy most likely they're going to give you a discount they're going to they're going to cut back uh, the monthly charge if you stay with them or you might be able to get a better deal if you go with the competitor so think that through don't let it just continue on on and on because you're going to pay extra and it adds up after a while you know if you can save a little here and save a little there you know this is money that's in your pocket not in theirs okay so anyway, just to point out, the cable's coming in, and it's going up the wall. And if you look at it, I have a coax cable. That's the white cable. It's going to go all the way over, and it's going to go to my router. Now, a router is a switch and a router. Think of a router. Let's talk about a router. What is a router? Uh, uh, this, by the way, is provided by Cox, okay? Um, and you can see the coax cable at the top there. That's that round cable that has a little bolt on it. Uh, it looks like a nut. That's that, and it has just one, one little center uh, wire in there. Um, it's it's a coax, stands for coaxial cable. In other words, the exterior of the cable uh, and the center cable have the same uh, uh, center uh, electrically. So that's why it's called a, a coax cable. It has braiding on the outside, which is a ground, and the center uh, of it has the signal. So that's attached to my router. And, um, and we're going to talk about a router in a second. But if you notice also in the back there, there's a little yellow. When you take a look up there, come on around this way. Uh, see the little yellow uh, um, outlets there? Well, that's the switch area. And you notice I only have one plug in there. Um, and I'm going to show you what I did. But that's where you plug in all your uh, external uh, devices, your, your computers, your, your things like that that you use. And, um, uh, you know, four, four ports here, that's not enough really. But that's okay for me because I'm only using one port. Um, anyway, what does a router do? Well, a router uh, is your separation from the outside, wall, uh, outside world uh, 
to the inside world. That's what you need to think about it. That's the thing that, if properly configured, should give you a basic uh, uh, protection from, from hackers and from people who uh, want to get into your systems. Uh, it does nothing more than that. It just, it just uh, takes what, what your computer maybe on the inside of a building does and when you start to type in things, you send an email or anything else, what it does is it changes the IP address and goes out to uh, the internet uh, that way. And then the internet comes in, hits the router, and the router changes the IP address back. For explanations of IP addresses and how network address translation works and all, there's other videos on my website that explains all that. But for today, just think of a router as something that separates you from the inside of your network to the outside of your network, to the, to the real world out there from your, your, your office or your home. Now the other thing this has is, as I already suggested, is a switch. So a switch is something that connects everything on, on the inside, internally. So if you have three or four computers in the house, or you have uh, other things like your VoIP phone, things like that, it's going to go through a switch. Um, we don't use hubs anymore. Hubs are really bad to use. We use switches. So what we have here is we have one uh, or four ports, but one is used, and that's the red cable. So now the red cable is going back. And you don't have to set yours up exactly like this. The reason I'm setting mine up like this is I know this wall right here is actually covering up a metal um, a frame uh, that's back there, a metal construction stuff, and that's interfering with my Wi-Fi. And this is also a Wi-Fi, by the way, wireless. So you can hit this anywhere in the house wirelessly and things like that. Has a real uh, complex password, so it's, it's really hard to hack. But that's your wireless network also. This is the antennas built in and everything else. That's why you don't see any antennas, they're all built in. And I have absolute great reception all throughout my house. And my neighbors have the same reception as I have. I, I don't really, I'm not that concerned if they hop on my Wi-Fi. Um, but anyway, I got Wi-Fi there, and the cable, the red cable, and I just happened to have a lot of extra red cable, so I really didn't pick the color, it's just the way it is. I have it connected to the ceiling there, going all the way back, and you see a little coupler there that I, that I used on the coax cable to extend it. But anyway, um, the red cable goes down, and I got some extra of the red cable, so I kind of wound it up there. It goes over and over and over, and then what it does, I'll use this ladder, is it goes directly to an old switch. Now, if you notice, this switch has paint on it and everything else. This is a switch that someone threw out in the trash of one of my job sites, and so I just grabbed it. And uh, it's a pretty good switch. Um, I, it's really, I have nothing programmed in there. Uh, it's just acting as a switch. And so um, I attach this switch here, it's plugged in, and what it does is, this is the feed from my router, and this is where all the signals come together, and then they are dispersed throughout the house. So all these cables here, this is, this is uh, called patch cords, all these patch cords here are attached to a small patch panel. Um, and it's Cat5e. Um, I, the house is too old to put in Cat6, it took too long. Uh, was, uh, that law, you know, that wasn't available when I first put this in. Anyway, you see all the cables going in and they're going all different places and everything else and we'll talk about that. This cable goes to my, to my office. These other cables go up to the second floor and we're going to talk about that. And one of the cables goes to my living room so I can hook up the TV. But all these are connected in this 24 port patch panel, our uh, switch. Um, and it's just, and this is all punched down. You, when you run cable, you don't want to just climp, you know, crimp on an RJ45 at the end. And the reason why you don't, and a lot of people say, well, it saves money. These things really don't cost that much, and it stabilizes the cable. So when you crimp on those things, and you just use that rather than a patch panel and patch cords, um, that constant moving them around when you have to troubleshoot and things like that causes that end to get loose and everything else, you're going to have some problems. So if you're going to put it in, put it in right. I use a patch panel. Some other people use jacks and then use a surface mount jack. And it's just a surface mount jack, and that's fine. Uh, you can do that. 
And there's other videos on how to do that in the series. Shows you how to punch down, shows you what jack you should use, what's the difference between a flush mount and a surface mount jack. Look, them, look for the other videos, you'll see them. Anyway, this is a switch, and remember, a switch is sort of like the center of a, a spoke. So if you, you know, you see the old spokes on, a, on the old uh, carriages, or uh, bikes. When you look at a bike and it has the center hub, um, and it has all the spokes coming out of it. Now, I don't want to call it a hub, because this is not a hub. This is a switch. There is a difference. You don't want to use hubs anymore. Hubs are not good. Use a switch. I don't, it's really hard to even find the hub, by the way, these days, but use a switch. Um, it's a better uh, thing. It's faster. It's, it's more smooth. You're going to have less problems. Anyway, I have, what, it looks like eight, eight ports, nine ports, jacks around the house, and we're going to talk about how you do that in a home. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com, and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to this YouTube installment of CableSupply.com.